Over the past few years, we've understood a lot more about how vaccines work to prevent illnesses like COVID-19. But new research out of the Maligan Institute of Medical Research has shown promising results for a vaccine tackling severe breast cancer. While it's early days, still in the preclinical stage, it's pretty exciting and hopeful, particularly when you consider more than 600 people die each year in Aotearoa from breast cancer. To tell us more about it, we're joined by Dr. Olivia Byrne in our Wellington studio. Morena, Morena uh, doctor, thank you so much for joining us. This must be a huge thrill and you, you must be pretty chuffed with the early results. Yes, Morena, thank you. It's been a really exciting week for myself and um, fellow co-authors to have our data published and this work that we've been doing in breast cancer vaccines to be out there for everyone to see. Yeah, and look, I know that this is a long road too in terms of developing vaccines, but can we talk about what this vaccine targets specifically? Yeah, so we have um, got these two vaccines that we're targeting against that we've been looking at that are targeted against breast cancer markers that are commonly overexpressed on um, breast tumours. And so one of these is against HER2, which a lot of people may have heard about. And then the other one is um, a marker called NWAY ESO1. And this is of particular interest to us because it's overexpressed on a large number of triple negative breast cancers. And this is one of those subtypes where we have a lot less um, treatment options available at the moment. So it'd be really exciting to add a new tool um, for that subtype. And what, we are, what we're interested in is can you use the immune system to generate an immune response against these markers and then it will go off and find any cancer cell in the body um, that's expressing the markers on the, on the surface of them and kill them. Can you break that down for me? Because a lot of what you just said, I'm like, I'm not, I'm yeah. not 100% sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, so we are so you through markers, focused on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so a marker, I guess we've been focused on COVID, so we're always trying to make a immune response against the spike protein for COVID. Um, and for cancers, we have um, these unique sort of proteins that are expressed on the surface of cancer cells that aren't on normal cells. Mm. So you're trying to make an immune response against um, these markers so that you use this powerful, really strong um, effect of the immune system to only kill those cells that have um, that sort of protein on the surface of them. So in terms of <laughs> this vaccine, how, how much of a breakthrough is this? As I said at the beginning, this is exciting and this is hopeful, but how much of a breakthrough is this? Yeah, it's, it's really great. And as you did mention, it is preclinical and mm. um, it's just the early stages of a, of a fantastic vaccine platform that we have been working on at our institute for a couple of decades now. And this is um, patented technology that we have. And it's really nice to show that you can get strong immune responses against clinically relevant markers. And what we're interested in is can we use this therapy sort of in the stages after you've had surgery to remove um, the primary tumour, can you come in with this vaccine to get rid of any tumour cells that may have already spread to distant organs? Because we see that as the real need for breast cancer is not that sort of initial stage, but Sorry, to inter am no, I, no, 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 because this, this is the part I'm really, yeah, this, no, this is the part I'm really interested in because you talk about the breast cancer in the first instance, but then this vaccine comes in and t it, tell me if I don't get this right, but it actually prevents, hopefully, the spread the of the cancer because that's yeah. the biggest killer, right, is the spread. Yeah, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's easy enough to have sort of the, the primary tumour removed through surgery, but what we're often seeing is that it's when the cancer sort of comes back and sometimes it's 10 years later when people think they've been in remission and then all of a sudden the cancer's popping back up in other organs. And if we can come in with a vaccine that will kill any of those cells that may just be sitting dormant somewhere in another organ waiting to pop up and you know ruin everyone's day, um, then we're having a lot more um, people staying in remission for longer and increasing the survival rate of breast cancer, which would be fantastic. I, uh, yeah, and, and you know, I, I'm thinking of friends who have gone through this and the worry about the cancer returning. So, you know, having something like this, and again, preclinical, but early results yep. look good, but having a vaccine yep. afterwards could help you know, not only with that, that physical return of the cancer or the spread of the cancer, but actually the yeah. worry and the stress for people, knowing they've got an added, potentially an added yeah. uh, protection barrier for them when it comes to breast cancer. 
absolutely that fear of it returning I, I can't yeah. imagine how that would be and you know that you shouldn't because you know that stress is related to increasing cancer as well but um, it would yeah it always be in the back of your mind so if we could provide this as sort of an insurance policy after you've had your chemotherapy and your radiation and surgery is it another extra step that you come in with and just just make sure that any remaining cell might be gone um, would be fantastic but Gosh, as you say this is just early data and there's extra steps to go yeah so yep. what now I mean I know this takes years yeah. to develop and it takes lots and lots of money so where to from this point yeah, it's, a, it's absolutely a fantastic question and I could probably ramble on for the rest of the show about <laughs> where I'd want to go next um, with this vaccine. But I think actually ultimately that question probably has to be posed to Aotearoa, like when do we want these treatments in clinical trials? And if we want them now, the research to be done now, and we want the research in the next in clinical trials in the next five years, then we probably need to be pushing to be a country that invests a lot more strongly in our health research. And we need to be you know, fostering our scientists to stay in New Zealand a lot more and keeping them here because we have innovative scientists and provide probably um, research programs where you are supporting the project from its conception to a tangible outcome in the patient in the long term. Um, otherwise, we might just keep having projects like mine and, and other ones that have been on breakfast before. You know, there's a nice happy sound bites about cancer research in New Zealand. But if we don't support them in the long term, we're not actually going to end up in for these outcomes for patients and in clinical trials. So how do we how do we help so, how do we how do we help you to continue to develop this vaccine, which is blimmin' incredible? Yeah, well we all, you know, have actions and ways in which we can um, help make create change in our country. Um, can all use our own votes, our investments and our lobbying um, to increase how we are funding research in New Zealand. Um, there is a bit of a review at the moment into the structure in which we fund programs. Um, but yeah, just a continued awareness around the importance of health research programs in New Zealand would be fantastic. Well, you continue doing what you are doing, Dr. Uh, Olivia Burns. This is incredible. I mean, I'm very excited um, about this. So I wish you well with your continued research, with the continued um, development of this vaccine. Thank you so much, Dr. Olivia Burns from the Milligan Institute, postdoctoral fellow. Thank you. Fellow. Go you good thing. Cheers.